Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk to you about standard components and standard components are a really important part of any manufacturing uh, improvements of efficiency. Any product that you take apart, pretty much any product that you take apart, you will find standard components with it. Now standard means the same. Okay, so it's a consistency, it's the sameness. Right? Now in industry, very little could be manufactured by mass production without a supply of standard components. In theory, one-off production or batch production, everything might be made by the manufacturer or the maker. Once you begin to scale it up, in mass production particularly, standard components need to be used. Now, a lot of the information I've got from this, I actually, when I look at my textbooks and places, really good website that I do suggest you look at is technologystudent.com, V. Ryan. Loads of great stuff on there anyway, but this, this one... Um, standard components. My, my presentation here is, is similar because it's a similar content, um, but certainly do go and have a look at technologystudent.com as well for, for a slightly different take on this. Um, I'm going to talk you through some examples and uh, this takes about 15-16 minutes. A good example of um, standard components, probably if top of your head, if you're asked an exam question, is nuts and bolts or electronic components. That could be resistors or integrated circuits. Standard components increase manufacturing efficiency. Now remember, efficiency is reducing waste, getting rid of any wasted uh, materials, wasted time, mistakes and errors. Consistent quality of the standard component is important. Now quality we'll talk about in a minute, um, but it's that consistency. If you are a manufacturer, you want the components to be the same every single time in every single product that you make um, because that way the customer knows what they're getting and that's reliability it's really important um, sometimes a cheaper product might you might think well we'll end up with a cheaper final product if we use a cheaper standard component but actually that means sometimes that the quality might suffer on the other hand if you improve the quality of the standard component the value of the finished product can increase an example of that, if we think about a bicycle, probably if you're doing BTEC engineering, a bike is a really good example. Um, SRAM gears and sprockets are a good, well-known brand for, for pretty sort of high-end, medium to high-end bikes. And if you've got SRAM on it, you know you've probably got a reliable product. It might be pronounced SRAM, I don't know. Um, or in a computer, something like an Intel processor or an ARM processor. Um, means that the product, the computer, is a better quality than one that's made using a, a non-standard component. When you use a lower standard component, a lower standard fixing, a lower standard electronic component, there is more chance of the overall, the final product, failing or not performing as expected. Okay, so if we're in trying to increase the life cycle of a product or the overall durability, meaning it will kind of resist knocks, Probably having a better standard component increases the chances of that being successful. A mobile phone is a great example of it. Um, there are lots and lots of different companies that make mobile phones. And if you look at the price range between them, some of that is about really good branding. Apple are a great example of that. Some of that is about really, really good components, which people talk about and, and sort of talk about the quality of the camera and what lenses they've got, or talk about the battery type, or talk about the processor type. And then you've got other phones. You know, if you go off to, to a mobile phone shop, you can buy a phone really, really cheaply. Chances are the components within that are made poorly or made in unpleasant conditions or are made um, probably to not last for quite as long. Whereas the user experience with an Apple product, Apple's brilliant because they invest huge amounts of money in the components that they use, the standard components. Now, Apple don't make the processor and Apple don't make the camera lens. What they do is they allow the experts in those fields to make those components and they then bring them into their own final Apple products. The Apple product is the result of a number of different companies in the supply chain feeding into those Apple phones or those Apple tablets or those. Um, and obviously, you know, Samsung and, and, and co also do exactly the same thing. Now, you would find probably some components in an Apple phone that you will find in a Samsung phone um, or any other phone because those are standard components, it, right down to the, the tiny little um, machine screws and stuff that you find in there. But what happens is that those companies, in order to 
diverge from each other, they then specialise in making the user experience better or the casings better or the, the way that the ergonomics is laid out better. So they focus on their products and they use those standard components to make their own products better. Um, excuse me. Another example here, I'm not going to read you through this whole thing. This is Cannondale, a Cannondale bike. Now, 1399 for me, that's quite an expensive bike. I know for a lot of people, that's, not, that's a mid-range bike. Um, but Cannondale, they're a good brand. I chose this one because actually what I noticed is that there, there's actually four different standard component suppliers on there. Now, not only are they standard component suppliers, they're also what's known as proprietary components. And a proprietary component is one which a specialist company makes. That's like a bit like this, the SRAM stuff that I was talking about a minute ago. A specialist company makes it. They hold the patents. They hold the intellectual property rights over it. And they make sure that their individual components are of a really, really good standard. But they own those intellectual rights. Cannondale, as a, as a company, or um, any, any sort of company would use their components. They don't then own the gearing system or the braking system. Okay? What they do is they bring those together to add value to their own product. And if you look at this example that I've given you here of the bike, um, Cannondale seem to mostly make um, the saddle or they make the uh, frame or they make, uh, trying to look at what else that we've got on there. They actually don't make very many bits. It's the frame, the fork and the, and the saddle in this case. Um, although they do make other products as well. Whereas they've actually got Omega, they've got Shimano, they've got Schwalbe, they've got um, yeah, Shimano on there. Uh, so they've got a number of uh, Maddox for the wheels. They've got a number of different companies that actually are put into the overall assembly. Okay, so at least four different manufacturers, all of a good standard. Okay, but proprietary components, remember, are a standard component or a standard assembly, but they are owned by another company. Uh, probably the most important thing with a standard component, I think, is the cost and quality. Now, as we know, by being more efficient, we reduce waste. If we reduce waste, we can reduce loss of money. And that could be passed on to the customer as a reduction in price. Or it could be that that's not passed on to the customer, but it increases investment and profits within the company. So there's two ways of looking at it. But any, any way you look at it, by improving manufacturing efficiency and reducing waste, the company is able to generate more income as a result of that. Now, if you have a product which is poor quality, people will maybe use it once, maybe use it in emergencies, but wouldn't seek it out, wouldn't recommend it, and wouldn't buy it again. Okay, an example of that, I was putting a blind up in my house the other day and it came with its own screws. When I tried tightening those screws, the head of the screw just, just stripped away because they were really, really cheap. I replaced those screws with a much better quality one and had a successful outcome. But those screws led me to think, do you know what, I won't buy that blind, a window blind, um, in future again because it just wasn't up to standard from my point of view. But mostly my opinion is based on the, their choice of screws. A standard component. I'd like to draw your attention to the bottom of this slide for a minute. We have two symbols which I think are really really important. The, the heart-shaped symbol is the British standard symbol. You can see that there's a B and an S there. British standards. We have our own standards in this country which um, products that are sold in our country have to comply with. They have to be of a good enough quality and if they have that British standard mark that means that those products are of a good quality. You can also apply British standards to quality assurance and quality control as well. So the British standard mark is really important. The CE mark, which is, which is a standard very similar to the British standard, actually refers to European standards, okay, of which Britain obviously was, is. Um, so to be able to sell a product in Europe, you would have to make or use a, a service in Europe. You would want them to have that CE mark. That's the European quality standard. The BS mark is the British standard. All right. um, different companies make, it, make the same component, but they might use different metals or plastics. They might use less accurate machinery. They might have poor quality testing, which means that their standard components, although they might be cheaper, would possibly fail, would not live up to expectations. And 
maybe they can't deliver consistently on time. Now, if you're someone like a car manufacturer, you need to know that the bolts that you're using to hold your wheels in or to mount your engine are going to work the same every single time because the minute you have a failure of the quality testing in the, in the parts department, then the whole assembly, the whole, the whole product might fail. Okay, so quality control is really, really important. So sometimes, although we might want to drive costs down, it is often better to pay for a better quality product. A couple of questions on there. I'm not going to read the PowerPoint to you. I'll tell you what is quite interesting as well. If you look at the, um, the top right of this slide, um, I just showed you very often we have tables and we have um, different specifications of products. Typically, this is a very simplified version. With any product that you have, you would have a data sheet, and that data sheet would give you your dimensions and it would probably also specify for things like um, screws and, and bolts what the material is as well. But it's, it's worth looking at data sheets with products to see what standard they are. Uh, standard components and assemblies. Quite often, if you were talk, answering an exam question about uh, um, why quality control is important or why standard components are used, it would be about making sure that the right product is in the right place at the right time and of the right standard. Now, if you think about a manufacturing system like just-in-time manufacturing, JIT, JIT manufacturing, the parts are often only in place in the warehouse at, or on the assembly line when they're needed. So, for example, the steering assembly of this vehicle would be put together in one area and it would then be added to the assembly line at a second stage. Now, if you imagine right at the beginning of that, that process that the nuts and bolts that hold that wheel assembly fail or don't pass quality checks, that could potentially hold up the whole assembly line at the end of the process. So quality control and quality assurance all the way through is incredibly important and the quality of the standard components with that. And, and again, you can see um, on the right hand side, in a factory, they would get a data sheet that gives them all of the information about every single one of those products. I think the other important thing here to note with a good quality product, um, every single part would be traced and it would come with its, with its um, technical data and batch numbers and the date of manufacture and the place of manufacture, potentially the person who's done the quality control checks. All that would be carried in as, as sort of data these days. Um, and that's part of quality assurance. So that at any point, if something fails, and you'll have heard about product recalls when things fail, if something fails, People can go, right, any product made in this factory at this point using these materials needs to be recalled and replaced. That's quality assurance, and we pay for that, and we think it's important because companies that don't make products that are quality assured and quality controlled mean that they're probably making products that have the chance of failure. It depends. You know, not all products are, are, are complex enough to really need a huge amount of that. But the standard components are part of that process. Standard components are not the same thing as standardization, but it's worth putting those things together because I think it's, it's linked to it. Um, if we use the example of um, digital communications, all of you are probably carrying a mobile phone or have a tablet, and, and I've been doing it myself today, trying to link things together and make those connections. It's often very frustrating and you might have to have adapters. And what we're looking for increasingly to allow better environmental friendly disassembly and recycling is for there to be a standard that everybody follows. So my iPhone has a lightning connector, um, my computer has a series of USB 3s and USB 2s and USB Cs on it um, so that all sorts of things can be connected and um, that's important nowadays that we're able to interface with other products using standard um, or standardization and Apple are often accused of maybe not standardising their components because they want to have the edge over their competitors. It also means that Apple can only be repaired properly by Apple authorised dealers. It also means that companies have um, the opportunity to reduce the product lifespan. Again, I'm, it's not only Apple that do this, but I'm using them because they're in the news for it. They were uh, A couple of years back, they were told off for their batteries being deliberately um, failing to, to hold their charge and the, um, the, the processes were slowing down as a result of that, which meant that people would be almost being forced to upgrade their phones. So standardization and the ability for other people to repair the products 
can really have a positive environmental effect. So that's worth thinking about. Okay, part of a bigger issue. It's not strictly standard components, but it's it's um it's interesting as part of that. Okay, so very briefly, this is the end. Um, advantages of using standard components. They can be manufactured in huge quantities. Factories and production lines are set up very specifically to do one thing, make that one component. They come in standard sizes or variations of those standard sizes, which means that they're, they're easy to find in catalogues, they're easy to find um, the, the version that you need. And again, I mean, if you're using a CAD program like Autodesk Inventor, you might use the, um, the, the component library and draw in a part from, from the component library rather than making your own. Um, and that's, that's a really important um, part of that, particularly in computer integrated manufacturing, which we'll, again we'll talk about in another video. Um, for a customer, buying standard components is also easier because they're categorised and often in a shop um, displayed next to other similar items. You would go to the nuts and bolts section or you would go to the resistors section. Um, quality testing, before it gets to the main company, it's probably been tested a number of times beforehand, which means that when you buy your nut and your bolt or you buy your resistor, it's already been tested by its supplier. It then comes into the overall product and you would assume that it will work because it's had its own quality testing. Uh, number five, manufacturers don't need to spend their time developing their own components. Gave you the example of mobile phone companies, um, likewise car manufacturers, they don't spend their time developing tires, they spend their time developing cars, they would probably talk to the tire manufacturing companies, but the experts in the field are the ones that do the, the development, which means that you can spend your own time coming up with your own product. Um, I think quite an important one, again, when we talk about lean manufacturing and efficient manufacturing, using standard components on a production line means that things happen the same every single time, and, and efficiency is about consistency. Every single time, the same tools, the same spanners are used, the same solder, the same soldering iron is used, um, and the workers then know how it's going to, going to work every single time. It's going to be exactly the same. Okay? It reduces error and it reduces um, things slowing down. And if a production line slows down, um, or any part of a production line slows down because the component doesn't fit or doesn't perform as expected, uh, then that can have a, a, a knock-on effect to the supply of the product. Okay? So standard components. Remember, standard components are things like nuts and bolts, resistors, integrated circuits, um, brackets. Proprietary components are ones where the, the design and the intellectual property belongs to another company, but it's used in a broader assembly. Okay. Set of questions there that you might have um, a go at answering.